Welcome back to another Millennial In Debt video. If you are new here, hit that subscription button below. Turn on the notification bell so you get that every time I upload a video. All right, my lovelies. It is, it is an uncomfortable truth. It is an uncomfortable fact that even though we might not be in a recession right now, we are feeling the pending recession come up in the workforce, right? So we're going to talk about four different things in this video. So I want to give it to you straight. First, we're going to be talking about the impact of the recession on the workforce. Then we're going to be talking about the industries that are often impacted the most. We're going to be talking about the industries that are impacted the least. And then we're going to talk about jobs that are currently hiring in those industries if you are seeking employment or if you're looking to pivot into something different. So let's get right into it. I like to address that elephant in the room because people ask me all the time and we talk about it all the time on the social which if you're not following, hit that Instagram and TikTok link. Okay, people ask, if you have a higher education degree, right, a bachelor's, master's, PhD, whatever it is, you are considered recession-proof. That's a lie. That is a lie. Um, I think the pandemic showed us that that was a lie. It is a really unfortunate, unfortunate truth, I will say, that having a higher degree, higher education degree, does not give you a better sense of safety because companies, when they are downsizing, they're going to downsize whoever they need to. And often we see, especially after the pandemic began, we see that people who do have higher degrees are ending up taking lower earning or lower, lower paying jobs in order to simply make ends meet. So we're just going to get that out there that, you know, having a degree can make things easier, but having a degree does not recession proof you, you know, as the, the workforce is doing what it is doing. Now, when it comes to a recession in the general sense, what often happens, obviously there is an economic downturn. And so we're going to see fewer opportunities available. So once the pandemic started, we saw a massive layoff. We saw a ton, a ton, a ton of people lose their jobs and we saw unemployment skyrocket, right? Correct. Then what we started to see was this shift in the workforce where it became more employee friendly, right? Where we could make more demands, where we could, you know, negotiate for more things. And it was really a a great time to change industries, to pivot into something new, to ask for a raise. And it's not saying that you can't do any of these things now, but what's happened is we've shifted back into the the power being in the employer's hands. And what that means is because there are so many layoffs happening, we all saw what happened with Facebook laying off 11,000 people predominantly in the recruitment um, sector of their company, not all, but predominantly in that area because they're having a hiring freeze. Tons of companies now are not only doing layoffs, but they are having hiring freezes. And when we're having hiring freezes, you will have less opportunities that are posted on LinkedIn, on Glassdoor, on Indeed. You'll see a lot less opportunities and you'll see a lot more competition because if people are being laid off, they're going to be looking for work. So what we're going to see or what we're going to have here is fewer opportunities posted, more competition for the opportunities that are posted, and it's going to make it a lot more difficult to negotiate because now the employer kind of has the upper hand, right? They're gonna say, well, if you don't wanna do this for the, the benefits that we're offering you, we could just give it to the other 5,000 people that have applied, right? It's an unfortunate, uncomfortable truth, but if I don't discuss it here with you, then, you know, Who's going to like, we're not going to sugarcoat over the fact that this is what's happening in the workforce. Now, similar to the stock market, what we'll see with industries that don't typically do so well during a recession, it is the industries where people no longer can afford to interact and engage with the same way they were during an economic growth period. So like we've seen, tech is not having a great time during this, you know, this economic downturn. And tech typically does not do well when the economy is not doing well. Why? Because people simply cannot afford to buy the new latest and greatest gadget. They simply cannot afford to interact and engage with the technology industry the way they were before. And so, of course, we use tech all the time and tech is important and it is a very big staple in our lives. But tech is not, you know, it's not just at the top of people's minds when people are trying to survive. Other industries that typically don't do so well, retail, right? People are being a lot more frugal with their dollar. Their dollar Shopping is not 
at the top of mind. I'm not gonna go run out and buy something when I know I'm like, oh, I have to cover this bill and my company is doing layoffs. Another industry that typically does not do well, travel, leisure, hospitality, restaurant industries, people will try to cook a lot more at home instead of going out to eat. We'll also see a shift in uh, service providers. So things like um, personal trainers, masseuses, spas, things like that aren't going to be excelling during this time because like I mentioned, I'm not gonna go out and pay for a massage when I know that I have to pay my light bill. The industries that do do well are consumer staples. So of course, healthcare. No matter if the economy is doing well or not, I'm gonna need to go to the doctor. I'm going to need to see my physical therapist. Social work is another industry that does really well during a recession because it's kind of what they call recession proof. So no job or no industry is 100% recession proof and most industries don't go unscathed, but definitely some industries will do a lot better. Education is another industry that does really well because people have to go to school, right? Students have to go to school. So teachers and professors will tech technically, typically be in demand during a recession. Another industry that does really well is the law. <laughs> We're not just going to be people who are no longer law-abiding citizens. Um, we're going to need, uh, need police officers. We're going to need people to make sure that we are secure. On the other side of that, you're also going to need lawyers and anyone in the lawyer industry. So that is another industry that does really well or maintains its position during a recession. Now, in those industries, of course, you have multiple jobs that people can do. So I'm just going to go over a few really quickly. I will have a full list if you sign up for my free remote job board. What I have gone on and done because people were like, tech is failing. Tech isn't failing, but we're going to pivot just as the economy and the world pivots. If you are not signed up for my free remote job board, definitely hit that link below and you will see a ton of available specific jobs to industries that are recession proof, doing well or maintaining and pivoting a little bit away from industries that are a little more wobbly right now in the workforce, right? So firefighters, we need those. Firefighters, ambulance drivers, uh, public transport workers. We'll see a lot of people are really leaning into the legal, paralegal world. You'll see a lot of people in healthcare, not just doctors and nurses, but just healthcare in general. You're going to need to feel to feel good, right? To feel healthy. And so that's going to be pharmacists, pharmacy techs, things like that. All of those jobs, which people are like, well, Melissa, what about you know people who might not have a degree? I got you. I got you baby like duh we also have senior care providers right so people are still going to need people to take care of the elderly in nursing homes you're also going to have education services so it's not just being a teacher or professor people still need to run the school buildings people still need to run the uh, colleges so anything that's in an educational service industry or an educational service capacity is going to have a lot more security than outside of the industry. Public safety workers are another source of employment, so that's your security guards. Safety, right, safety. So you wanna think about, I'm just like, safety. You wanna think about roles and jobs that if there was not someone to fill it, would it cause chaos in the world? If the answer is yes, then typically you know those jobs will be in demand, those jobs will have openings, those jobs will be recession proof, and those jobs will be in a growing industry. Another role that you wanna look into specifically are car couriers, I can never. Courier, so that's your UPS, your FedEx, your USPS, DHL, they are still hiring, especially, especially during the holiday season, they're going to need people, and even if it is a seasonal opportunity that you, you know, enter the field into, even if it is a seasonal position that you enter, there is always opportunity to go full time. And lastly, we have our federal government workers. Any job that's kind of unionized, you'll also have your accountants, taxes, two things that are, that are certain, death and taxes, accountants, and credit card and debt management services. Unfortunately, when the economy starts to tank, companies like loan places, you know, like that offer money, they're going to be giving out money. The requirements will become a little stricter, but people are going to lean heavily into credit cards and personal loans in order to, to survive. And so a lot of people who do credit and debt management services are going to be in demand to help people as they walk through such a difficult economic time period. Thank you always for joining me and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. I promise less, less recession talk. I know. Bye.